My name is Shubhana Mitra and uh, I'm with the Institute for Transformative Technologies and our mandate at ITT is to identify and unpack the most pressing issues in global development across uh, the spectrum, agriculture, health, sanitation, education. And for the subset of issues where game-changing uh, technologies, innovations, can help move the needle because uh, technology is sometimes necessary, never sufficient. We um, cast a wide net to get patents, uh, emerging innovations uh, across universities, labs, communities of innovators. And we work with established companies to uh, complete these innovations, to productize them, and to take them to scale through markets. One of our focus areas is rural healthcare, and uh, the initiative that I manage uh, with my colleagues here, Dr. Leslie Shelton and Dr. Uh, Sandeep Napa, uh, it's called uh, Universal Clinics. And uh, what we are doing is building uh, an integrated platform of technologies called the Universal Clinic that makes it possible to provide an unprecedented range of uh, healthcare services at quality in a highly cost-effective and scalable manner in rural areas. Now, diagnostics are a critical component of the Universal Clinics, but uh, also for rural healthcare writ large. And the traditional uh, paradigm for diagnostics uh, just does not work for rural healthcare today. Uh, for a variety of reasons. It involves expensive equipment, uh, labs, uh, skilled technicians to uh, operate and maintain these labs and this equipment, uh, good quality running electricity. And so uh, what happens is the typical facility which is accessible, if any, to the rural patient does not have the basic diagnostic capabilities for meaningful health care. Um, if you take, for example, a pregnant woman, basic antenatal care requires that she be tested for preeclampsia, um, which involves a very simple test, actually, for protein in urine, uh, for uh, her blood group and RH factor in case she has postpartum hemorrhage, uh, which is fairly common, which is uncontrolled bleeding during and after delivery if she requires blood transfusions. Uh, for gestational diabetes and uh, the typical facility which she is able to ac access uh, does not have these capabilities. Uh, and what happens is that patients either do not get diagnosed or get misdiagnosed and uh, with, with uh, very sad outcomes. Now this is changing, uh, especially in the last five years, there's been a big push for innovation in this space. Uh, propelled largely by uh, mobile technologies. And uh, we've come a long way and there have been a lot of interesting innovations that have reached the market and also scaled up to some extent. But um, this space uh, is still not one that is attractive for the GEs of the world. And most of the solutions continue to come from entrepreneurs and innovators uh, like the ones on our panel. And uh, the challenge, the big challenge that they face is not one of purely of innovation because uh, innovation is only part of the puzzle. Uh, there are, you know, other challenges to contend with, you know, the biggest that there, there is no viable market uh, to begin with. And, uh, you know, regulatory issues, issues of adoption and uptake. So what we'll do today is uh, talk about the challenges and how people have negotiated them or continue to negotiate them, what the big learnings are, so that entrepreneurs and innovators in this uh, in this space and the ecosystem as a whole uh, can manage these issues better, and so that innovation in this space um, continues to thrive. I represent Biosense. Biosense makes a point of care. Uh, diagnostic solutions targeted at, um, I wouldn't say bottom of the pyramid, the lower half of the pyramid. So we have products like uh, TouchPeak, which is a non-invasive anemia screening tool. 
we have a product called UCheck, which is a point of care urine analysis tool, which does routine urine and microalbumin to creatinine ratio. We have an affordable glucometer, which we manufacture in India, called among the few people to, to do that, as strange as it may sound. And uh, we have a, a system called PicoLabs, which does uh, HPA1C, a full liver function test, renal function test, uh, thyroid, fertility hormones, uh, CBC, all at the point of care. Uh, so in a primary healthcare setting or in a community healthcare setting. Uh, yeah, that's all about us. So uh, I wear a, uh, a couple of different hats. Uh, one is, of course, uh, uh, IKP Asset Management uh, Company, and we uh, we are an asset manager. I'm currently raising a fund uh, focused on healthcare, uh, and uh, our uh, our first fund, the India Innovation Fund, uh, also has a portfolio which is dominated by life sciences and healthcare uh, companies. Uh, the focus of both the funds would be early stage, um, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm mainly with a with a more health systems approach uh, than with with the more traditional sort of VC uh, in healthcare approach. Uh, I am also on uh, on the government's uh, primary uh, healthcare task force, uh, so I'm I'm involved in the. Uh, you know, in the in the government policy making and, and thinking about uh, what kind of innovations can be adopted, uh, and uh, I'm I'm in charge of um, uh, Himachal Pradesh's sort of uh, health systems reform currently. Uh, so that's something which uh, uh, which gives me the other perspective uh, uh, in a way. And uh, I also serve on the board of uh, Sugavazu Healthcare, uh, which is a uh, which is a small primary care delivery. Uh, uh, you know, chain of clinics and looking at what kind of uh, models in primary care and especially comprehensive primary care could work in uh, the Indian context. Hi, um, I'm Adarsh and I represent uh, Ainda Systems, uh, an early stage startup. Um, so what we are trying to do is kind of uh, build a point of care screening device for cervical cancer. Um, and we are, um, we're trying to actually decentralize the existing way uh, cervical cancer screening is done today in the in the country. Um, uh, being the world's capital for cervical cancer, we have about one third of the entire globe's mortalities happening in India. Uh, so that's a problem that we think we can solve effectively by taking technology to the masses rather than actually having them come over to uh, centralized locations. Uh, and towards that, we want to use kind of deep technologies that are um, like machine learning, artificial intelligence, and like. Uh, so that's about a quick uh, introduction about me. So my name is Matthias. I represent a uh, German uh, family-owned pharmaceutical company. We're actually the largest family-owned pharmaceutical company globally, Beringer Ingelheim. About 50,000 employees. Our focus is on prescription medicines uh, for chronic non-communicable disease. Um, I also work, have a hybrid role in my real life I'm looking at new business opportunities outside of our traditional business, the pharmaceutical business. And then I'm uh, leading a uh, family foundation called Making More Health, where we're trying to improve access to primary health care for BOP populations. And I will give you an example later on how we bring technology into these solutions. We we are operating in a holistic manner, manner and we do that in a twofold. The first one is uh, approach the ecosystem in a holistic way. It doesn't help if you build a hospital somewhere if people can't get there, so you need a mobility solution. People need to be able to pay for the services, so we need a microfinance solution. And we also need uh, technical support in order to do, uh, do state-of-the-art detection and management of diseases and last not least we also need a distribution system that effectively uh, allows distribution of uh, essential medicines. The second aspect of holistic is coming to the consumer patient journey. So we have an interest in not only manage acute or chronic disease because we believe uh, uh, healthcare is not sick care but start with education and awareness over detection acute management, chronic care, and rehabilitation. 
so we're trying to address these two holistic approaches within our uh, business models and I will give you an example later on. We're working very closely with our friends in Ashoka and we have built a network of around uh, over 150 social entrepreneurs with whom we're co-creating your business models. Uh, hi, I'm Shoro Bhattacharya. Uh, I head uh, Lattice Innovation, it's a, which is a design firm that focuses on medical technology design and development. So we basically act as the design and development arm for startups, for hospitals, for various entities. Uh, along with that, we, we are working on a couple of different product ideas, primarily related to telemedicine and related to uh, you know, communication and closing the, uh, the digital divide, if you would say, and, and being able to have greater access to uh, tools and technologies that are readily available in urban parts of India, in rural parts of India also. Um, and uh, a lot of uh, our learnings as a, as a founding team were in fact uh, gathered while we were working for a rural healthcare provider based out of West Bengal. Uh, we were three of, three, three of the founding members, we were all part of that firm first. So uh, we come from a healthcare delivery background, and, and, but are technologists by trade and I think by passion also. And uh, what I think particularly Lattice really focuses on is I think we feel that we are tool makers, and, but tools come last, you know, people and process uh, come first and only if the people and the process are in place do the right tools make sense. And, and, and as tool makers we see a lot of tools failing, primarily because people uh, like the glamour of a new tool without understanding the effort and the hard work that needs to go into building uh, the people and the process end of things before a tool can actually fit and solve problems. So. That's at least the, the hierarchy of, uh, of, of looking at an issue that we'd like to follow internally. You know, the end user, the human element of this problem is something that uh, often gets overlooked. Uh, but it's very important because we are talking about, you know, the health provider, the ASHA worker, the frontline worker. Um, their experience of work is going to change dramatically when a new tool is introduced. Um, and understanding their needs and contextualizing those needs and convincing them that this tool is actually going to add value to their work and their lives I think is very important because uh, it's important to avoid non-use, it's critical to uh, uh, make sure adoption happens what are some of the issues, for example, in the context of maybe some products that you've developed where you have encountered these issues or rather how do you incorporate uh, this, this lens into your work? Do any of you want to? Yeah. So, um, absolutely right. I mean, the end user is the most vital cog in the whole wheel here is our learning and insight. As technologists, we sometimes are blindsided to the existence of a user's uh, implicit and explicit requirements. Explicit requirements are something that can be elicited very well enough, but it's the implicit requirements that are difficult to unearth. And there is no really substitute to this uh, apart from actually spending time with them in their context kind of being a fly on the wall, if you may put it that way, and then kind of observing how they do things so that we can unearth those, um, you know, uh, implicit issues that they don't really uh, voice out. So what we've done is actually, when we have, of course, we did also start in the traditional technologist perspective. We said, okay, uh, we know there's a problem and we think we have a solution to that. Uh, though we started with that, once we started identifying who would be the users, and we, when we started talking to them, uh, we, we realized that a lot of things had to be uh, unlearned and then looked at from their perspective. So we, we kind of spent enough time on the field uh, trying to kind of understand the uh, life, a uh, day in the life of the user from various stakeholders' perspectives as well as the users. And that is something that uh, has gone in uh, in our product development stage. So uh, currently, rather than just taking their inputs, we're actually co-creating it with them. So we have uh, end users who are actually, in fact, helping us build the product as we go along. And uh, hopefully that should help us eliminate a lot of uh, rework that generally happens when that is not 
isn't the case. So, thank you.